<laughs> Yehu. I pen them out. That was an awesome ministration. A praise made to our God. And I feel like saying Mau Enyo. But this morning we have some testimonies here to the praise and glory of our God. God alone does wonders. And like Papa said to us this morning, we shall be for signs. And God is continually doing his signs in our midst. Amen. But we have a testimony from someone who wants to remain unknown. And it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. I said, My brethren, God has shown me favor. I needed some money to pay my fees, but the money was not coming forth because I had some challenges with my job. I said, Some months ago, I became a friend to a Christian sister on a Christian platform and in the course of our talking I mentioned it that I needed money to a purpose and lo and behold the following day the sister sent the money. Amen. God used a foreigner who is somewhere in the United Kingdom to make a way for the testifier. God will make a way for you where you do not even expect it to come forth from. Amen. There's another testimony here from a sister by name Patience Chachu. She said she's had an issue of fibroid for over 13 years. And about two months ago, she was standing the, on the, in front of her house and she fainted. When she was rushed to the hospital, the doctor who examined her said that it was needful that an operation be carried out on her shortly to get rid of the fibroid. And so a date was fixed. She came to Papa, and Papa asked for a pair of safe hands for her. To the glory of God, she's gone through the operation successfully. No stories, no issues, and she thanked our God. And she says that we are blessed, for we have a God in Perez. Amen. Indeed, you have a God in Perez, and you ought to know that you have a God in Perez, and the God whom you serve daily, he will make a way for you. They came with a thanksgiving offering. Amen. There's another testimony here. It says that I lost some amount of money in a taxi and I cried to God to restore what has been lost. And indeed, he answered my prayers and he has restored it to me twice. The fellow came with a thanksgiving offering. Amen. Shall we receive mama with a clap? Let's continue to bless God for this morning. Let's bless God for his goodness. We bless God for the great testimonies. May God answer every unanswered prayer in your life like never before in Jesus' name. You are welcome into the second service. Can you just welcome somebody close by you with a good smile this morning? Welcome somebody. Welcome somebody close by you. Welcome, welcome about three people. Welcome about three people. Give somebody hope this morning. We just want to thank God for giving us another day like today. I just want us to just be upstanding, just give Jesus a clap offering and a shout of praise. Of 
thanksgiving and praise and worship as you praise God in your homes, in your car, in church. Things are going to be broken in your life like never before. Sometimes when you are driving, you just, you just give Jesus a shout of praise. Just thank him. Thank him for his goodness. And you see what God will do in your life in this season. I want to, you to encourage yourself that every wall that is in your life, every wall that you are facing, is coming down this bank. It will be your portion only if you believe it. If only you say amen. So this morning we are going to say thank you God for my life. Thank God this morning. Open your mouth and begin to thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for everything that he has done in your life. You are also going to bless God for the second service. Thank God that God will give you a rima word this session. Give somebody hope. As they watch television, this TV, PTV this morning, God should give somebody hope. We are also going to pray for somebody who is on the way coming. Open your mouth and begin to pray for somebody who is on the way coming. we go to the Lord's table, you are going to pray that God prepare me for something good this morning. As I go to your table, may healing be my portion. May everything that is unwanted in my body live in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I want to see somebody pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We bless you this day. We thank you for giving us life. You are the reason why we are here this morning. Thank you so much for the new things that you are going to do in our lives. We bless you. We give you praise for even our bishop, our father, who is going to give us the word. We thank you for giving him utterance, revelation knowledge like never before. Thank you for the second service. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Amen. Put your hands together and be seated. Somebody. Sisters, please. Want to pray for those who are celebrating their birthday. If you are celebrating a birthday, last week you celebrated your birthday, you were not prayed for the coming week. You are going to celebrate your birthday. And if you are traveling, please come forward. We want to commit you into the hands of the Lord before you go. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you this morning. Thank you for adding one more year to your precious, precious people. Ask their days, let their strength be. Ask the Lord, great things will happen to them this year. Let people who knew them know that, Lord, these people have been visited by you. Father, change their story for the better in the name of Jesus. We commit all those who are traveling into your hands. We ask that the angels that will be assigned for them, Lord, will go before them and bring them back safely. Journey mercies for them in the name of Jesus. We call it done. Amen. Happy birthday and safe journey. We want to say come back with testimonies. We are ready for the word of God that will give us light this day. Once after Sunday, let's receive the presiding bishop. Put your hands together. lift up your Bible and will you say this is my Bible it is the Word of God it has the power to change my life and to give me an inheritance 
amongst the saints. I'm not a hearer only, but I'm a doer of the word. Wave your Bible at me and shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Will you shake hands with five people and say God will meet you at your point of need today. Amen. Chief Elder, you are welcome. After so many weeks, <laughs> we missed you. Last week we were in Milton Keynes in the United Kingdom. We met, we had a convention for our European churches, and it was an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I was there with uh, Mama, Bishop DC, and the Bishop elect Raymond Aqua. It was a wonderful time, and they extend their love to you. Amen. For oh, your amen. I, I, are you not? Are you not happy I'm back? Oh, then, then let me feel you. <laughs> Amen. In Psalm 67, verse 3, the Bible says, Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield an increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. May God bless the reading of his holy word in our hearts. This is the month of November. It's a month of prayer, praise. It's a month of, of praise, thanksgiving, and worship unto our King. And this month, may the people praise the Lord. May God see your life, and may they praise him. May you increase so that you can celebrate the Lord. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Major prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1. He says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon you, and the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings the brightness of thy rising. Amen. It says, because of the darkness, the Lord has risen upon you, and so shine. You are going to shine like never before. It says, gross darkness has covered the earth, and the Gentiles will come to your light. Because you are the light, of the world. Jesus said, I am the light, and I've set you as a light. Light that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And because you are the light, many people will come to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give them praise, give them thanks, give them praise. In Scripture, darkness represents problems, represents challenges, it represents economic meltdowns also. But the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, that at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. And the prisoners listened to them. Midnight is the darkest hour before the morning. And midnight also represents problems and challenges. Whatever your challenge is, this month as you celebrate the Lord, may the light of God show forth in your life. Anytime the light is there, the darkness cannot comprehend or arrest the light. And I came to say to you that God will touch you this season and give you a testimony like never before. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. In Ghana, we have economic storms. Amen? Friday, 53 fund management firms had their licenses revoked. And this is coming closely after the closure of 10 banks about a year and a few months ago. 
And three months ago, 347 microfinance companies and 28 savings and loans and finance houses also closed down. The Bank of Ghana said in their report on Friday that some of the companies are owing people and they are not able to pay, and some of them have even stopped operations. Since that time, I've had different people talk to me on different things. And somebody said to me, Bishop, all my savings and investments are gone. Another said, in your book money, in your pocket, you encourage us to save for our future. And so I've been investing. But here am I, it's gone. A young man who has asked his employers to be investing 20% of his salary in Provident Fund said, Bishop, I should have been eating well with my wife than to squeeze to live and be losing all my investment. Yet another said, we should have been informed by these institutions had a problem so we could have salvaged our investments when the banks were being closed. Another one said, the Provident Fund of 530 workers in my company are all in the balance. In the same light, someone who has worked till 65 years and is going on retirement this year said, I am saddened and don't know what to do because the fund management firm my company invested our Provident Fund with just had its license revoked. Somebody also lamented, Bishop, the worst of all is that the receiver the government gave is paying just 10,000 cities out of my over 1 million Ghana cities plus on my investment, which was not a pyramid scheme, but was a Bank of Ghana approved institution. Somebody also said, I'd rather put my money in a bottle and dig the ground in my backyard like my grandfather used to do and put it there because it is safer <laughs> there than to put it in the bank or invest it. When they said those things to me, I said, wow, money is failing. In Genesis chapter 47, we see an account where money failed in the Bible. Genesis 47 verse 15, it says, and when money failed in the land of Egypt, and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For the money faileth. So this is not the first time money is struggling or there is an economic meltdown or people are losing their money. In Egypt, money failed. There was an economic meltdown also in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 1. The Bible says, and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. There was famine in the land. Nothing was working. There was an economic challenge in the land of the Philistines. But the Bible says in the verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. That means that in the darkness that you are faced with, in the economic challenge that you are encountering, in this season, God will bless you. Oh, I came to encourage somebody if you are listening to me here, if you are watching me by television, listening by radio, I came to encourage you and to let you know if in the midst of economic crisis, in the same year God could bless Isaac, the Lord will bless you. The Bible says the man was great, he went forward, he grew until he became very great. That will be your portion and that will be your testimony. The Bible says he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. You will be envied. Amen. God is setting you up to be envied. Give the Lord a believing amen. The Bible 
says in the verse 15, for all the wealth which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. <laughs> his inheritance had been cut off. Whatever resources he had, the Philistines were cutting it off because he became a source of envy. Whatever is being cut off in your life, I came to tell you, God will give you a Rehoboth. The Bible says, and Isaac dug those wells again until after a the point there was no more struggle with him. And he called that well Rehoboth. He said, God has made space for me. God will make space for you. Oh, I said, God will make space for you. It got so bad that Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for you are much mightier than we. A whole nation was saying to Isaac, You are an institution. You are better than we are. You have been blessed more than we are. And so Isaac, go from us. That will be your story. People will look at you, and they will see the blessing of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. With what is happening, I can tell you on authority that you can't apply the secular principles of finance anymore if you are going to succeed. Amen? Because a lot of the owners and the founders of the banks, a lot of them have economic degrees. They are doctors. Some of them have master's degrees and what have you. But what it simply means is that the human principles and motivational uh, speaking principles cannot stand the test of time. Man's principles fail at certain times. The only principle that does not fail is the principle of the word of God. I came to announce to somebody, everything will pass away, but God's word is time tested and God's word will never fail. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise. You can't use man's principles to determine your life because you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. But as for God, his word is yea and it's amen. It's been tested, it's been proven, and it doesn't fail. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise. And so I want to say to you like Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19, he says, Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So Jesus was saying, instead of having all your treasures on earth, you need some treasures in heaven. Ask the person sitting by you, do you have some treasures in heaven? much treasure have you committed to God's house? Ask, ask another person, how much treasure have you committed to God's house? Friday, I, 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 you know, we, when we returned from the UK, Friday, I went to Tafu to preach. And whilst I was in Tafu then, you know, they sent me the report on uh, the, the meltdown and the, the fund manage, management firms that had been closed down. And so, Friday after my preaching, I went to bed. I, my sleep was bad. Throughout the night, I was praying. I was praying because here were all those things people were telling me. And, and, and in, the, in the course of it, when I, Saturday morning, when, I, when we were coming, I was still struggling in my spirit. And suddenly at 6.40 a.m., suddenly at 6.40 a.m., the Lord said to me, tell my people, I have made you a financial sign in the midst of the economic chaos. <laughs> uh, I'm speaking to you like a prophet of God. I'm speaking to you like God's prophet. God said for me to tell you he has made you a financial sign in the midst of the economic chaos. Amen. Say God has made me a financial sign in the midst of the economic chaos. And I want you to write it big on the screen, put it in your room. And, 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 and Daniel, I want you to frame it, write it, put it in my office, get me some for my house. That God has made me a financial sign. Amen. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. It is the Lord who gives you the power to get wealth. And in the midst of everything, you would make wealth. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. The key to your becoming the financial sign is faith. The key is faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe. If the Bible you are using belongs to you, underline the word must. Must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That means faith is a must. You cannot become anything God has said you will become if you don't exercise faith. Faith is a must. And the month of October was our month of faith. We're talking about faith, believing in God. Amen. And if God says that you will be a financial sign, I came to announce to you, you will be a financial sign. You've got, all you have to do is to believe it. Tell somebody, believe it. In Acts chapter 14, verse 3, Acts chapter 14, verse 3, he says, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, who gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Paul and Barnabas were preaching and they spoke boldly in the name of the Lord and God gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders. God will work financial signs and wonders for you. Because God will confirm his word. The counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. And I came to announce to somebody, God's counsel concerning your life, it shall stand. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. <laughs> Beloved, it takes faith to produce signs and wonders. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Mark 16, 17. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Faith in action is what produces the signs. And as you believe, signs and wonders will follow you. Hey, your amen needs a top up. I said, as you believe, that you will run through your troop and leap over your walls. Signs and wonders will follow you. Give the Lord a believing amen. Because God has not called you to be lugubrious. He's not called you to bow down your head in shame. No matter what you are going through, God has not called you to bow down your head in shame. He's called you to rule and reign. In Romans 5, 17, he says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. God has called you to reign. He's called you to be in charge. And you will be in charge. Whatever is happening in your life will not take you down. Ah, your amen. I said, whatever is happening in your life will not take you down. And it takes faith for you to rule and reign. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, it says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Because you are born of God, you will overcome the world. But how are you going to overcome the world? You are going to do it by your faith. I can see some people possessing their possessions. I can see some people that are rising and standing tall. I can see some people that are above only because of their faith. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. And the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you are hearing me, faith is being generated in your heart. Faith is being generated in your heart that you can't sink, you can only float. I said you can't sink, you can only float. I said you can't sink, you can only float. Tell, tell somebody sitting by you, I don't know about you, but as for me, I can't sink, I can only float. <laughs> Amen. The storms of life cannot sink you. You can only float. Tell somebody, I can only float. <laughs> I can only be on top. Jesus in John 6 verse 63 was talking to the Jews and he said to them, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. 
Beloved, as I, decree, as I declare the word of God to you, that word I'm speaking to you, they are spirit, they are life. It has the power of God to change your life. Whatever was dead in your life, as you hear this word, may life come to you. Whatever was dead in your finances, in your business, in your investments, may life come to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. The Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. Life is coming to you. The life of God. I said the life of God. The life of God is the God kind. It's Zoe. Oh, hallelujah. You see, whatever is done without faith, the Bible tells us it's a sin. Romans 14, 23. It says, well, whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith, other version says, is dead. And that is why you must exercise faith. And what is faith? Faith is knowing that God will do what he has said he will do. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and shall he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Man can speak. Man can give promises and break the promises. But God doesn't break any promise he gives. His promises are yea and amen. His promises will come to pass. The word of God will be fulfilled because forever his word is settled, not only on earth, but it's settled in heaven. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. And so the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, Romans 1 verse 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And a lot of that the time, that's where we stop. The good news is the power of God unto salvation, but don't stop there. He says, unto everyone that believes, Unto everyone that believes. If you believe that the gospel, the good news I'm bringing to you, is the power of God to save you. That word salvation there is the Greek word sozo. And the Greek word sozo means healness, means forgiveness of sins, means protection, means be, uh, being defended. It also means being delivered. And I came to tell somebody, because you believe the good news that I am preaching to you, you will be defended. Because you believe the good news I am preaching to you, you will be protected because you believe. You will run through your troop because you believe you will be on top. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. <laughs> Beloved, if there was any time in your life when you needed to believe, this is the time. Tell somebody if there was any time in your life that you needed to believe, this is the time. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 16, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Above all. From the verse 10, it says, Take on the whole armor of God. And then it talks about being gathered on with the girdle of truth. He talks about carrying the sword of the Spirit. But then he comes to the verse 16 and says, Above all, Above everything else, you need the shield of faith so that you quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. The fiery darts are like arrows with fire. And in those days when they went to war, a lot of the shield they used was a shield made with straw or leather. And when the, 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 the fiery dart got into it, it got it bent. And so Paul is saying here, or the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, is saying here, take the shield of faith so that as for you, none of those fiery darts will touch you because of your faith. I say a thousand shall fall at one side, ten thousand at the other side. It will not come nigh thy dwelling. You will lift up your head and say your Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Give him praise and give him thanks. He is a good God. Hallelujah. And so, you will, you will take his word. You will believe in his word. You can't believe without the word. You need the word. You need the word. In the midst of 
such challenges. In the midst of economic challenges, it's the best time to even uh, give, give your tithe or pay your tithe. Amen? In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, he says, bring, uh, let me read the verse 10. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now or test me now. Hear it. God is saying, test him. If there was a time you should test the Lord, it should be this time. Tell somebody, if there was a time you should test God, it's now. Oh, let me hear you tell somebody else, if there was a time you should test God, it is now. He says, and prove me now, hear what it says, the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I came to tell somebody, it's a season for God to rebuke every devourer. Whatever the devourer has been eating from you, may God rebuke it in the name of Jesus. If there was a time you should fight, it is now. Tell somebody if there was a time you should fight, it is now. Stop all those arguments and tight it Old Testament bondage. No, 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 no. If you're a member of this church, there's no argument about tights. Amen? There's no argument. If, if, if you won't tie, just leave us alone. We believe in the word of the Lord. We are committed to the word of the Lord. And because we are committed to the word of the Lord, we will see the manifestation of God in our lives. Oh, give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Says, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land. That is what you will become. That is what you will become. In the midst of all this, you want to obey Jesus' commands. When he said in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, when he said, Give, Luke 6, 38, when he said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Running over shall men give into your bosom. Good measure. Says, Give. For with the same measure that you met, with that it shall be measured to you again. Why? Because as long, Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. As long as the earth remains, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. We have entered the hot season. Amen. Think the weather is hot here. Amen. There are times when I even enter the air condition, I still feel hot. <laughs> because we are in the heat season. But scripture says, whilst the earth remains, sea time and harvest, sea time and harvest will never cease. The Holy Spirit said, when you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. That is scripture. And because you are a man and a woman of faith, you will believe the word of God. Give him praise and give him thanks, somebody. In Hebrews chapter 11, we have heroes of faith, heroes and heroines of faith. And when you flip through the heroes and the heroines of faith, you come across the Bible saying about Daniel. It says, and by faith, Daniel quenched the mouth of lions. It says some quenched the mouth of lions. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And the lions shut their mouths. They did not eat him. And some people have argued. They said, well, it is because, you see, the lions had eaten. And it is because, you know, the lions, they, they want to explain it away. But the truth of the matter is that scientifically, lions hunt in the night and sleep in the daytime. And Daniel was thrown into the lion's den in the night. And the lion decided they would eat him. Why? Because God was doing something in the life of Daniel. And so the lions shut their mouth. Lions are supposed to sleep in the daytime. But instead of these lions sleeping in the daytime, in the morning, the people who met, who upon Daniel and they threw him into the lion's den, they gathered them and threw them into the lion's den. And before they landed, the daytime that the lions were to be sleeping, they ate them before they landed. I came to tell somebody, oh, what God, what God is going to do in your life People cannot explain it. They will try to explain it, but it is inexplainable. Give them praise. Give them thanks. Give them praise. 
It's inexplainable. It's inexplainable. And then three Hebrew boys said they won't bow to King Nebuchadnezzar's idol. And when they said they won't bow, the king said they should throw them into the fiery furnace. And he said they should hit it some more. And the seven guys who took these three Hebrew boys to throw them in the fiery furnace, that fire consumed them. But when these boys fell into the fire, the Bible says their robes tore off. And suddenly the king was looking in the fire to see them consumed. And suddenly he saw the fourth man walking in there. You see, the Bible, the Bible did not say before the fire, I will deliver you. He said in the fire. And when the Bible talks about fire, fire means challenges. Fire means problems. Fire means the, the, the things you are contending with. But he said in the fire. I will be with you. So when the fire was burning, suddenly the Bible says that in the midst of the three Hebrew boys, there was somebody who was standing and the king looked and he said, the man standing in there looks like the son of man. Listen to me. Until that time, until that time, nobody could see Jesus. But when the children of God were in trouble, Jesus appeared even before he was born. I came to announce to you, in your trouble, he will be there with you. He will never leave you now. Oh, no, you didn't hear me. I said, God will not leave you nor forsake you. Tell somebody sitting by you, God will not leave you. He will not forsake me. I may be going through fire. But the Lord is with me. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Is it not interesting that the people who threw the boys into the fire, the same fire the boys were walking in, that fire consumed them. I say whatever fire is going on, there are people that, oh, People that you look for them tomorrow, you won't find them. Some will commit suicide. Some will die before their time. Some will, some will drown and not come again. But my Bible says about the three Hebrew boys. It said when they brought them out, they didn't even smell of the fire. Neither was their clothes consumed. What it means is that it doesn't matter the kind of fire you are going through. By the time you will pass through this fire, people will not even remember you went through the fire. I say, by the time you go through this fire, you, people will not remember you went through this fire. God is going to do it in such a way that in a few months and a few years from now, you will have a restoration. You are. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise. That will be your story. That will be your story. Tell somebody I won't go under. Tell another person I won't go under. I can only stay on top. <laughs> oh, give, me, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Get ready for your victory. I said get ready for your victory. Get ready for the power of God to manifest through your life. The boys did not even smell of the fire. They did not smell of the fire. They, 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 they were smelling so good that if you looked at them, nothing showed that they've been through fire. And that would be your testimony. That would be your testimony people will perish, you won't perish. You will stand tall, you will stay strong. I, I said God himself will lift you up. He will put you on a rock to stay. He wants to use you as a financial sign and a wonder. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. And so my Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, he says, we haven't the same spirit of faith. We haven't the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith that uh, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys had 
We have the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have it, the same spirit. Say we have the same spirit of faith. <laughs> if God could make it such that those people did not go under, you won't go under. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. He was, I mean, they, 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 they got hold of him and threw him in the sea. A whale swallowed him. The whale could not digest him. He had to vomit him because, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Because once in the water, he made a vow to God. He said, God, I take your word. I will obey your word. And by reason of that, <laughs> the water could not drown him. You won't drown. I said, you won't drown. Tell, some, tell, some, tell somebody sitting by you, I don't know about you, but me, I won't drown. No matter how high the water is. Amen. <laughs> and so you've got to believe with your heart. You've got to believe with your heart. It might not look, look like that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are not walking by what we see. What you see in my life today might not look pleasant. It might not look like I will not drown. It might look like I'm drowning, but I came to tell you, because I believe, I am coming out. I said, because I believe, I am coming out. You look at my life today, and it might, it might look like I am going into the fire. But because I believe, I will go into the fire, but I'm coming out. That is your story. I am telling your story. I say, I am singing your song. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tell somebody the bishop is singing my song. The bishop is telling my testimony. Amen. Amen. So it's not by what is happening around me. Everything might be crumbling around me. But oh my enemy, don't rejoice. Because when I fall, I will rise again. When I fall seven times, I will rise seven times. Oh, I came to tell somebody, people cannot celebrate because today you may be down. The fact that you are down doesn't mean that you are not out. You are not down, but you are coming back and you will win the victory. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. If God is making you a financial sign, then he's setting you up to be the envy of your generation. Setting you up to be the envy of your generation. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus was telling a rich young ruler, go sell everything you have, give to the poor. And Peter and Co. were worried because Jesus said, it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. So Peter in Mark chapter 10 verse 28 said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, we have left everything and have followed you. And Jesus answered and said, truly I said to you, there's nobody who has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution in the world to come eternal life. Jesus said, whosoever has left, has forsaken, has given has sacrificially given something to my kingdom, will not lack it. They will receive in this life a hundredfold with persecutions. Because when God blesses you, people can't understand. And listen to me, church. I came to tell some of you the kind of blessing God is going to bless you. People cannot explain it. You know, there are times... People can't even understand. At the end, we are friends. We are friends. We are friends. We are friends. You know, they, it, 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 there are times it's, it's, it's amazing. People think that the devil can bless people, but God cannot bless his own. And so when people get blessed, listen, the kind of blessing God is going to give you. It, oh. And it has happened before. 
because your life is in the hands of the Lord. People cannot explain it. Amen. I said they can't explain it. Tell somebody you can't explain my blessing. Because you, they, they'll put 10 in your hands and it will become a thousand. Look, you will be receiving the same salary with people in the office, but they can't understand why. The day, the day Jesus fed 5,000 men, minus the women and, the women and children were, were not added to the number. That day, they gave him five loaves and two fishes or two pieces of fish. But Jesus told them to let the people sit in groups. And when they sat in groups of 50 each, what he did, he didn't multiply in the hands of Jesus. When Jesus broke it and put it into the hands of the apostles, in the hands of his disciples, they began to mold. Oh my. So, what God has given you, what is put in your hands, God will blow on it his blessing. Oh. And so your friends cannot explain it. Your relatives cannot explain it. Your classmates cannot explain it. In fact, your peers cannot explain it. It is the blessing of the Lord. And my Bible says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. May the blessing of the Lord manifest in your life. In your going out and your coming in. May people see how the Lord has blessed you. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. I know some of you are still wondering. Did it ever happen in the Bible that God could so bless people? In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. He says, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. He says, stand ye in the ways, see and ask for the old paths. Beloved, there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. So whatever God is going to do, he has done it before. And so today... I want to give you one Bible example, one main Bible example of how God can bless. And if you have a Bible, go with me to Job chapter 1. Are you receiving something? How many know you are going to be financial signs? Oh, oh you see, uh, uh, you are not. Amen means so be it. How many know you are going to be financial signs? Job chapter 1 and from verse 1. He says, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He was perfect and upright, feared God and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. He had ten children. His substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. That, you know, I began to ask yesterday about some of the things here. And they told me that an average sheep, an average sheep that is not too fat, average, is a thousand Ghana cities. So if you have 7,000 sheep, it means he had 7 million Ghana cities. Averaging. If you have 3,000 camels, and when I googled a camel, an Egyptian camel, a camel in Egypt is $1,126. So $1,126 by 3,000 will give you 3,378,000 multiplied by 5.5, which is our city equivalent to the dollar. <laughs> Amen. It will give you 18,579,000 18, Ghana cities. <laughs> that already is 25 million Ghana cities. <laughs> and he had 500 yoke of oxen. Every yoke has two oxen. 
And so, if you multiply, and I asked the cost of an ox, and they said it's 4,500 average. So if you multiply that, that is 4,500,000 Ghana cities. And every yoke, one set, will plow 1.422 acres a day. <laughs> Amen? Now, this is in those days, over 3,000 years ago, Job had this. If Job were to be in our day today, he would have been using tractors. And I checked, the, I, I checked how much a tractor can plow in a day, or how many acres, acres a tractor can plow in a day, and they said a tractor can plow 150 acres a day. Now, if Job was plowing by one oxen, 1,422 acres, that means that in one day, with his 500 yoke of oxen, he will plow over six something acres, 600 acres in a day. Can you imagine the kind of farms that Job had? He was a rich man, very rich man. And he had 500 donkeys, and each donkey cost $1,000. That's 500,000 by 5.5. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Give a praise. You know? When I Googled, I saw that even camels, camels, racing camels today, one racing camel in the in UAE or United Arab Emirates or Qatar, one racing camel is $55,600. What? And if you look at how Job was, and in the east where he was, he should have been having racing camels. Amen. That one, I didn't compute it because I didn't want to bamboozle you with how wealthy. And the Bible says, he had a great household. That man was blessed. <clears throat> but how did Job enjoy his blessing? Let me quickly give you three simple things about Job's secrets. Because in Job chapter 29, <coughs> excuse me. Job chapter 29 from verse 1. He says, moreover, Job continued his parable and said, you know, Job was rich. He lost all his riches. His children died. He lost all his properties. And then his friends came and his friends were bad comforters. They began to accuse Job of everything. And Job was telling them his story. And he said, verse 2, oh, that I, wa I were as in mom's past. As in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, Job was saying, let me tell you, in my, when, when I was me, and the secrets of God, the mysteries of God were revealed to me, and the things that I must do, God showed them to me. What were the things that God revealed to Job? Three. I'm just going to give you three of them. Number one, go back with me to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone is day. Job 1 verse 4. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, they were really that about. Mm. They were really enjoying and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. The Bible you are using belongs to you. Underline the words, thus did Job continually. So Job did not do this one time. Every time, Job was offering burnt sacrifices to God. So Job was somebody who offered continual burnt offerings to the Lord. He was given, and a burnt sacrifice will cost you. And Job was doing it daily, continually. Listen, if you want to be like Job, then you, are, you should be somebody who is giving sacrifices to God continually. Tell somebody, raise an altar to God continually. He was committed. He was committed to burnt offerings. He always came to God with a burnt offering. Number two, Job really.
really loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. Job chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible tells us. <laughs> you know, let, let's start from verse 7. Job chapter 2, verse 7. A lot of times people think that God gave Job sickness. God didn't give Job sickness. The Bible says, So when forth Satan from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Until Job, go, go to the verse 8. And he took him a pot set to scrape himself with that, and he sat down among the ashes. Job blisters, I mean, boils just broke out all over him, and they were blistering. And so he had to sit in ash and pour the ash and use a broken pot to scrape himself. Now the wife looked at it, and the wife's heart was breaking. The wife said, you've served God all your life. And the verse 9, then the wife said to Job, do you still retain your, own, your integrity? Curse God and die. And a lot of times people have accused Job's wife. But you've got to be in her shoes. Here she was. Her husband was continually bringing a sacrifice to God. Her husband loved the Lord. The secrets of God were showing in his life. In one day, ten children, they all died. And they all died tragically. And then thieves stole all his riches. And then his buildings collapsed. In one day, any woman will go gaga. Any woman. Don't blame Mrs. Job. Don't accuse Mrs. Job. Even some, even some men will go bananas. Amen? Don't blame her. And Job said in verse 10, he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? In all, what I want you to underline in your Bible, it says, in all this did not Job sin with his lips. In all this, he didn't sin with his lips. Some of us, when we are in trouble, we talk too much. Some of us, when we are in trouble, that we, we sin against God. We curse him, we say things, we complain, we mama. Job, in all these things, he so loved God. He was so committed to God. In fact, at one point he said, No, he slay me. I know my Redeemer lives. Give him praise. Amen. Job loved the Lord. He had, a, he had a personal relationship with him. That it didn't matter. Physical things can be lost. But he knew that his God abides forever. Listen to me. It's your love of God dependent on what is happening in the physical. If what is happening, if your love for God is dependent on what is happening in the physical, then the devil can take advantage of you. But if you can still love God, whether it's good or bad. And so the prophet Habakkuk said, he said, even though there might not be any cattle in the storm, I know my Redeemer liveth. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. So Job loved the Lord. And number three, Job chapter 29, and from verse 12, Job 29 verse 12. He said, because I delivered the... Let, let's start from verse 10. Let's start from verse 10. Let me. He says, the nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when they saw me. <laughs> he says, when the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Job was saying, Charlie, if you saw me, you are already. He said, God has so blessed me that even the nobles, they didn't talk about me. He said, God has so blessed me that when you, when you meet me, you, you share testimonies. That is going to be your story. Uh, I, I said, that is going to be your story. When you pass, when you pass, they'll say, hey, this guy, he has been blessed, though. That will be your testimony. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Then he talks about, he talks about in the verse 12. He says, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. He said, I was a sukura for the poor. He said, the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. He said, I ministered to the poor. That man loved God. 
That man was a giver to God. And that man was also a giver to the poor. He took care of the poor. The Bible says if you give to the poor, you are lending to the Lord. In the midst of your financial crisis, if there was any time when you should bless the poor, this is the time. Amen? Some of you, yes, if you are clapping, do it well. Some of you, you've got, to pay the school, you've got to pay school fees for some of your relatives. If you don't know how to pay school fees for some people, come, come and see us. We have a scholarship scheme. Amen? Some of you have to pay the fees of some people in the university. You have to do that. Some of you have to pay hospital bills for people. You have to, I mean, you have to take care of the poor. Amen? Listen. In the midst of this economic crisis, if you're going to be the financial sign, Three simple things. Number one, love God with a perfect heart. That is no corner, corner, no, no chobo, chobo, no, hey, amen. You love him with all your heart. You don't, you, you, you don't use your, you don't sin against God. Not even with your lips. And number two, you make sure that you sacrifice continually. Things that concern God must concern you. God was talking to Israel in the book of Hagar. And he said, some of you, you are living in sealed houses. When the house of the Lord is in trouble. So God was basically telling them that your house, if you don't make your house better than the house of God, at least your house or the house of God must compare to your house. David said, how can I live in a house built with cedar and God will still be in a tabernacle? Some of you, you have air conditioning in your kitchen. You have some air conditioning even in your fridge. Some of you, you have air conditioning in your TV set. If God, if God were to allow you, you have air conditioning in your shoes. That is how much air conditioning you want. Put air conditioning in the house of God. Amen? Some of you, the seats you sit in in your house, better than the one you have in church. And you come to church, and your seat probably, you sat on it and it broke. If I were you, I'll say, Bishop, how much will 10 seats cost? Let me pay for 10 seats. Are you here with me? Because, listen, your house should not be better than the house of God. And there are some of you parents, you sit here in the adult service, and you are very comfortable, and your children, when they go to church, the children church, it's hot. You don't want those children to grow up and run away from the house of God. If that is not going to happen, it means that you have got to invest in that place so that those children can have a future. Oh, give, give, give God praise. Give God praise. Look, some of you, some of you can build a building we want to build there. You can build it. One person, you can build it. Some of you can do that. Some of you can do things, oh. Some of you have houses. You have eight, ten houses, five houses, three houses. You haven't built any church building for God. When we raise a little offering, it's a, it's a season. It's a season for you to do something to the glory of God. Because God wants you to be a sign, and you will be a financial sign. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. And so, you want to love God. You don't want to sin against him. You want to be a giver in the house of God. That means you don't miss your tithes. You don't miss your sacrificial offerings. You don't miss giving to the kingdom of God. You don't miss. And you take care of the poor. Bow down your head. Let us pray. You are here today and you want your sons forgiven. I want to pray with you. If you want God to forgive you your sins, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven, lift up one hand. You'll never be the same. You want your sins forgiven, yes. Yes. You, you backslided, you want to come back to the Lord, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you whilst our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. You are here today and you have some bad habits. You want it broken off your life, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. 
Yes, if your hand is lifted, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. Yes, yes, yes. If you are standing, yes, I said, if your hand is lifted, please stand. 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 If you are standing, please take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. You want your sons forgiven? Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. You want your sons forgiven? You want your sins forgiven? You want your sins forgiven? Will you please lift up one hand? Will you lift up one hand? Will you pray this prayer with me? If you are watching by television, listening by radio, also, read, also pray this prayer with me. Church, lift up one hand. And let's pray this prayer together. Say, dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Come into my life. Make my life a testimony. To those who know me, thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I commit these dear ones to you. I pray they will know you and know you better. I pray they will be established in your house. Make them a testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your eyes. Church, will you stand with me? Church, please stand with me. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time, will you take your Bible, your bag, your purse? Come to me in front here. I want to welcome you. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Come to me in front here. I want to welcome you. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, take your Bible, your bag, your purse. I want to welcome you. Yes. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, yes, take your Bible, your bag, yes. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Come to me in front here, yes. Put your hands together for them. Yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. You're worshiping with us for the first time. You're worshiping with us for the first time. Yes, you're welcome. Amen. You see this dear lady, will you please follow her? We have some trained people that will talk with you briefly. Then you come back and join us. Jeff, put your, follow her. Yes. Put your hands together for them. Follow her. Follow that dear lady. Yes. Put your hands together for them. 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 Yes, put your hands together for them. Glory to Jesus. Will you take your seats for a few minutes? the night of which Jesus was betrayed he dined with his disciples and at a dinner he took the bread he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said this is my body which is broken for your body in like manner he took the cup gave the cup to his disciples and said this is the new covenant in my blood as often as you drink this, you do show the Lord's death till he returns. Pastors, pastors, spouses, can you come? Let's pray over this bread and wine. Let's pray. Uh, who is taking those gentlemen, that gentleman out there, Oshes? 
make sure you find out who is taking those gentlemen, a gentleman out. Heavenly Father, we pray over this bread and wine. We ask that this be sanctified meat for the use of your people. We pray that every power inherent in the body and blood of Christ shall be the portion of your people. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. Okay, pastors and then elders, deacons, deaconesses, will you please come? Let's sit at the Lord's table.